Hey guys, it's Jake here with the E-Trailer. Today we have a 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee L, and we're gonna be taking a look at, and I'm gonna show you how to install the Kurt T-Connector vehicle wiring harness. Now, right off the bat, this is gonna be a four pole wiring harness so that you can connect to your trailer, get the lighting signals from your vehicle to the trailer so that you can let others know when you're towing that trailer what your intentions are. Um, right off the bat, you'll notice that we have a five pole here. Well, we use an adapter because um, the person who owns this vehicle is gonna use it primarily to tow his boat. Um, and he needs that reverse lockout function to be on there, which is going to be your fifth pole to be able to help um, to unlock the brakes when he's backing up with his boat trailer. Um, so that's another good thing about having a four pole is that you can convert to a five pole, six pole, seven pole. We have all kinds of adapters on our website but the four pole is what you're definitely gonna to have to start with. What I like about this kit is that it's gonna be pretty easy to install, um, especially if you're putting a hitch on at the same time. You're gonna to have to remove the fascia to put any hitch on the uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee L, the 23 Jeep Grand Cherokee L. So while you've got that rear fascia off, it's a good idea to go ahead and throw your wiring on with it, whether you plan on towing a trailer or not. Um, what I like about it is that the connectors is just going to tie into the backs of your taillights. So you don't have to worry about cutting any wires. There are no factory wires that you'll have to splice into in order to install this kit. You'll take your fascia off, you'll take your taillights out, splice into the back of them, plug them back in, and put them back on. That's all there is to it. The hardest part about it is probably running a power wire from the back to the front to attach to the battery, which even so, is not really that difficult to get installed. Um, we'll walk you through the entire process of how to do it, um, including taking the fascia off, because again, it's, it's probably the easiest way. It'll have a converter box on the uh, wiring itself so that you can um, be sure that your vehicle's lights are protected from any shorts on your trailer and vice versa. You don't want your trailer back feeding to your vehicle and you don't want your vehicle to send a false signal to your trailer lights potentially burning out your trailer lights. Um, that box is the most, it's one of the most difficult things to locate or find a location for it uh, when you have it in behind the taillights. These taillights are very, very tight on space and there's no room to mount that converter box. That's why taking the rear fascia off, we mounted ours right about here behind the rear fascia. It bolts up perfectly fine. We use a self tapper to tap it in the side of the vehicle. Um, it makes it extremely easy. But with that being said, let's go ahead and pull the car inside and show you how we did it. Now to begin your wiring installation, as you can see, our fascia is off of our vehicle because we just installed this Kurt trailer hitch. Um, we're gonna cut to a quick clip to show you how to take the rear fascia off. Um, it really is the easiest way to get this wiring installed. It might seem a little extreme, but while you're taking the rear fascia off, that's a great time to get your hitch installed if you plan on using your wiring. We'll have four 10 millimeter bolts up underneath here that we'll have to remove. There's gonna be two here and two here. Take a 10 millimeter socket to get those removed. Now in our wheel wells, we'll have four eight millimeter bolts we'll have to remove. This is for both sides. Uh, we'll have one here, here, here in this divot and here in this divot. Now in preparation to remove our rear fascia, what we like to do is we'll take painter's tape on any piece that's gonna to have to be removed. So this piece, we're gonna to have to peel it back in order to get to a bolt back here. And then this piece is actually gonna be removed, but we wanna put a piece of tape on this side of this seam and this side and here and here. This is just gonna protect our paint from uh, getting scratched when we're moving these pieces around. Next thing we're gonna do is pull this piece of trim off. Um, it'll just pull straight out. If you put your thumb on this, um, the body, pull out. We're just gonna keep prying up. You wanna take small bites at this because if you pull too much, you'll end up putting a crease in your plastic and it's very hard to get rid of that. Pull this out. Your instructions are gonna to say to take this off completely, but we found 
on the models that we've done before that you can get it to where you pop this one off that's right behind the bolt that we need to remove and that's good enough. So we'll take a 10 millimeter socket and remove this bolt. Now we'll need to remove this cap and the cap on the other side is going to reveal a screw that we need to remove. We're using a trim panel tool, but if you don't have one of these at home, I recommend using a flathead screwdriver with a paper towel wrapped around it. It'll help to not scratch this paint up. We'll take our 10 millimeter socket and remove these two bolts. Now we'll take a flathead screwdriver to pop this plastic fastener out. I like to take a screwdriver and then you slide a trim panel tool or another flathead screwdriver to remove that. I'll take that same plastic trim panel tool, slide up under here, pop those fasteners loose, set this to the side. Now I'll take a T30 Torx bit and remove this bolt holding our taillight in place. Once you get that out, you take the taillight and you want to twist it out like that. I'll pop all those fasteners loose. I'll pop this tab and push on in on this black plastic piece right here. Push in, push in on the light, or on the plug, and pull up. Now what we like to do in preparation to pull this face off, because that is going to be our next step, we'll pull this plastic out, wad up a paper towel or a shop towel if you got one. Uh, you could use a rag too, and we'll shove it back in here. Um, this is why they recommend removing this whole piece. I don't really think it's necessary because you can just get it held back far enough to where it, it'll make this connection a little bit looser so that it'll get it out of our way. Now with an extra set of hands, we'll need to pull the fascia off. You'll just start over by the wheel well and slowly pop the fascia loose. Uh, we found on these cars, now we're working on them when they're pretty new, um, these, these pop out very easily, but just do it a little bit at a time. Once you get to the top, these pretty much release themselves. You lift up a little bit on it, and then, and you'll see why this tape is here, because those hangers pretty well um, go wherever they want. But we'll just pull out a little bit. There we go. And we've got some wiring back here that we'll need to remove. Should have, have a plug on both sides that we'll have to remove. It's easier if you pull this plug off of here. Take a trim panel tool, pop this little tab loose, and then pull this plug apart. We'll set this to the side in a safe place for reinstallation later. Now that you've got the fascia off, we'll start by mounting up our control box. Uh, we'll take a sticky pad. This is actually a different foam pad um, that we have come in some of our kits. The, the sticky pad that comes with your kit is not going to be very adhesive, uh, but we'll show you a fix here in a second. You can put the sticky pad on there. Essentially, it's just for temporary use. We'll take it. We like to put it in this spot right here. Make sure it's free of any dust. Our vehicle's brand new, so we shouldn't have any issues. Take that. Stick it there. And then we'll take a self-tapping screw and put it into the side of our vehicle. Just like that. Now you can take the self-tapper that comes in your kit and we'll tie this ground to the body of our vehicle. We just like to do it right above the control box, that way we kind of keep everything in the same area. And then we can take this extra wire and wrap it up and then zip tie it up here, high and tight and out of the way. We'll take our green wire, run it up, behind and make our connection. You'll notice that two of the plugs look exactly the same. You want to plug opposites into each other, 
close that little red tab. And this is going to be our new plug that will plug into the back of our taillights. Now what we need to do is we're going to take our yellow wire and our four pole, run it across. We're just going to follow this sensor wire, stop the four pole here, continue on with the yellow wire up into our driver's side taillight. We'll go ahead and do that, come back and show you what we did. We took our yellow and four pole wire, zip tied it along this wiring. Um, this is really a nice clean install, again, because we have the rear fascia off. Our four pole is here, we'll leave it down here with the hitch so that it's there. Uh, for whenever our owner of our vehicle needs to hook up. Ran the yellow wire across, up, came out of the taillight housing area. We'll make that same connection that we did on the passenger side. Click that red tab, and now we're ready to reinstall our taillights whenever we get to that point. Now what we need to do is we'll attach the long black wire that comes in your kit to the black wire on our control box. We like using heat shrink butt connectors so that you don't have any issues with corrosion or at least this is going to help to prevent it for many years to come. We're going to heat shrink this up. I'm going to run this wire up to the front underneath the hood, attach it to the battery and we'll show you the route that we ran it under the vehicle. The way we ran our power wire is we came down from our converter box. You want to leave a little bit of slack in this. Came up. Ran it on top of or behind our heat shield here for our exhaust. Ran it over top of the frame rail. You just want to stay away from anything hot or moving. You can see here, we ran it across over top of this other frame rail. Down through the bracket for our fuel tank. And then came over, ran it over top of this panel. Through all the way, came out. Zip tied it to some factory wiring here, our factory hosing, and then we ran a fish, our, uh, fish wire, which we just used some airline tubing we had laying around, ran it down behind this heat shield, and then pulled our wire up into our engine bay. And we ran our black wire up through here, through this opening. You want to keep it away from this um, hood support. We ran our wiring over here, ran it around our fuse box. We have it here. We cut off a couple feet of it because we had extra. We'll take our fuse connector, put a butt connector on one end. Again, we used a heat shrink butt connector. Um, and then we put the ring terminal on the other end. And we just have to make these, this connection. Crimp it down. And we can heat shrink this and then connect it to our battery. And we'll take a 13 millimeter socket, remove this nut, slide our ring terminal on, be sure that your fuse is not in the fuse holder, the nut back on, there we go, now we can put our fuse in. Of the cap up and we're ready to test out our taillights. Now in order to test out our wiring we'll have to temporarily plug in our taillights so that our vehicle will send the signals back. We're just going to set them here and then test the wiring out. Now we can test out our basic functions that our four pole will be serving to our trailer. Start with our left turn, right turn, running lights, and our brake lights. So all in all, it's not too bad of an installation. Um, having this on your vehicle is gonna make your vehicle so much more versatile. You'll be able to tow trailers, have accessories that need lighting functions on it. Um, we have a lot of cargo carriers and bike racks that have extra brake lights on the back. You can plug that into your four pole, um, or if you're wanting to use it for a converter, whether it's a, a four to five, six or seven pole converter, um, this is going to help you get that power wherever you need it. And that's going to do it for a look at and installation of the Kurt four-pole wiring harness on our 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee L.